Well, today we're going to talk about overclocking on the 3080 and what is different this time around on the 30 series graphics cards. Steve's already gotten a little bit of a head start. Like he just didn't wait. He went, he went with bearded hardware or Joe and they went right to LN2 and Be Quiet is proud to announce the arrival of their very first digital PSU, the Dark Power Pro 12. Premium cooling with a completely new frameless fan design promote optimal air circulation, keeping the internal components as cool as possible while being as quiet as possible. The Dark Power Pro 12 allows for switching between single or multi-rail 12 volt power for better overclocking, while the 80 plus titanium certification and 10 year warranty provide long term peace of mind. To see the full list of specs and sizes available, follow the link in the description below. So we're going to use Port Royal for this right now, and I just want to see where we kind of stack up. And what's funny is there's a couple of 30, well, it's funny, a lot of people said no 3080s made it out into the market, but look at this. Look at all these, 3080, 3080, 3080, 3080, 30. Where'd all these people get them that the 3080s don't exist? Look, look at the countries that they're in. But it was just a paper launch, you get paper launch. Clearly a lot of people have the same paper. Anyway. When it comes to the overclocks uh, up here in the leaderboards, you can see this is bearded hardware right here, Stepans. And with, with Steve, he had the record, but as you can see, this guy from Brazil has already beat him by about 90 points. No, uh, like 70 points, something like that. So it's gonna be interesting to see where we can get our FE card on air to overclock because that is on LN2. I don't believe they did any sort of hard mod, like voltage mod to it yet. I, I think they were just using like secret sauce BIOS and stuff that removes power limit or at least makes it ridiculously high. But it's kind of funny with the 2080 Ti, how long it took for people to get their hands on it. We had the leaderboard for a long time without anyone else jumping on there, but it's really interesting to see just how many 3080s are out here considering the fact that, you know, everyone says they, they, don't, they don't have them. We don't normally focus on single card. We usually would go right to like SLI type stuff, but as you know, the 3080 doesn't SLI. So we might get a little bit creative today. Um, I might go ahead and point the air conditioner at it because as you know with, uh, or maybe you don't know, the boost bins and the way that that works. There's a table. It's, it's kind of like at this temperature, boost at this clock. And GPU boost also allows it to go higher if the temperatures are nice and low. The problem is some of those boost bin algorithms there in terms of where those tables say the, 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 the clock speed should be start as low as like 10C, which is insane. It's like, okay, we're, we're over 10C, so we gotta clock down a little bit. It's, I think it's just math, honestly. It's like you know, percentages of headroom go this far, which is why you, I think Steve even showed at like 9C is where they got like their first bin in terms of it dropped a clock. And it's like, that is so odd to me. Um, let's go ahead and talk about what you need to overclock. I, I see a lot of people ask me, whoa. So I think the first thing we need to do, honestly, I, I think we need to update because I think 4.6.2 beta 4 is an old one. But we use Afterburner for this because it's simple. You're not gonna hurt your card. Um, the worst thing that's going to happen is you'll get some shutdowns or some crashes. We even talked about how to recover if you've accidentally made it so it applies an overclock at Windows startup. So every time you get to the desktop, it crashes. Um, but to, today what we're going to do is just talk about the sliders, how they interact. Things are not the same this time around as they were before. The voltage works a little bit differently. The memory is definitely very different. And we'll talk about why that is in a sec. And then we'll just see how far we can get our FE to go and see if we can even end up maybe in the top 20 on the leaderboard. Uh, top 10 might be possible, but we'll see. You want to go into the 3D control panel uh, settings for NVIDIA, go to manage 3D settings, come down to power management mode, prefer maximum performance. Now what this is going to do is it's going to keep the core from throttling down so much. It's going to pretty much stay at its boost clock most of the time now. And then we also want to turn texture filtering quality uh, right here from high quality to high performance. This usually picks us up a couple of percent in performance when we're overclocking. These are very important settings when we're doing like our RIP GN stuff. And then we wanna make sure G-Sync is off. The, vo the core voltage slider, let's talk about this one for a second. Um, it's pretty much a carryover from the 20 series, but we're not entirely sure how this works yet. Steve did some discussion on this. It's for the most part a placebo. We believe it allows a higher voltage to the core at a lower frequency, which should help with stability if it's voltage is your reason for being unstable and not just silicon quality or ASIC quality. But NVIDIA is kind of tight-lipped on how the voltage works and what this slider does. We just know this is something available to it inside of the BIOS, and this is why this unlocks when you open it up. I usually will max this out, um, and then I'll test and see if with my best scores, if lowering that does anything. More, than, more often than not, it doesn't. You can see by maxing it, nothing happened on the millivolts, but that's fine. 
Um, power limit, we obviously want to crank that over, but I'm going to start our first run with everything at factory. Factory fan curve, factory power limit, factory temp, all that stuff, because we obviously need to be able to measure our baseline. Now, I've already done this because of the fact that we did it with our benchmarks, but we have a different driver now, technically, from the press driver. And rumor has it, this driver is better at overclocking than the, the press driver that we had. So we're going to go ahead and test that now. We're going to do Port Royal. The nice thing about Port Royal here is the fact that it doesn't do a CPU test. It's straight up GPU. So that means for the first time, we'll be able to get some pretty decent scores with Ryzen CPUs, with uh, standard like Intel CPUs, like the 10, I say standard, like the 1000K, but to get on the leaderboard before, we had to use a W3175X on water at 5.1 gigahertz with six channel memory running ice water through it. That was the only way we could get on the board before because physics was a, was a part of the test, not this time around, which will make things really kind of interesting. So let's go and see what our baseline run is. So our original score in our benchmark was 11,466 when we did our you know, out of the box testing. So as you can see, the driver didn't really do anything. Um, didn't expect it to, to be honest. So if we take a look at our numbers here though, so we can kind of see where we were. The GPU usage pegged, which is perfect because it's a perfect test. It's, it's synthetic, it's designed to max out the, the GPU. Um, you can see the core megahertz though, bouncing around. 1965 was our high. Here's our temperature. You can see we maxed out at 73. Now here's the thing. These cards are very power limited. And so when you max out the fan, believe it or not, that's a few watts that's not available to the core. So when you're power limited, if you start going, well, I want to crank the fans because I want the core clock to go higher, that in theory works, but you'd be surprised what five extra watts can do to the, for the core speed in terms of maintaining clock speed versus having the fans be at maximum speed. So that's, that's why we get crazy with the AC and stuff. It means we can leave the fans low, have that wattage be available to the GPU, and then get a few extra, um, maybe an, an extra 30 seconds or so per clock speed rather than having it dip down. And sometimes it won't dip at all. All right, so if we go to the Hall of Fame, nope, not even in the top 100, we're at 11,400. So now we need to see if we can get on the damn leaderboard. But I also want to know what these sliders do. This is educational as well as kicking off RIPGN, and this is not going to be RIPGN today. We're not going to get near that score because I'm not modifying my cards. So as you can see, moving the core voltage slider did absolutely nothing as expected. In fact, we still went down six points. That's because the cooler is a little bit warmer than it was before. Um, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and max out power limit and temp limit now. And we're going to do the same thing. So I'm obviously, as you guys can see, what I'm doing is I'm playing with each slider one at a time because you need to know what the effect is. We're gonna get down to memory last because memory, believe it or not, this time is very different than, it way, than the way it was before. And that's because they basically added with the G6X memory correct or error correcting memory, which is kind of like ECC memory for your GPU. Let's go ahead and benchmark it right now with the factory fan curve and then we'll max out the fans. So you can see how giving it more power, in this case, 15% extra power because it goes to 115. So that raises the 320 up to, I'm not sure where, math. Allowing it to draw more power means it can keep the core clocks up higher, longer. And then because of the GPU boost algorithm, if we start seeing more temperatures because of more power, the clocks are gonna fall because the temps are too high. So that's where the fan curve then comes in. So you can actually see now, we're not dipping down into the 18s like we were with our uh, power limit increased. In fact, I should probably add power to our on-screen display so we can see what number we're reaching. But remember, we were dropping down to like 1860, maybe even slightly lower than that, but you can see we're staying between 1950 and 1935. But as you can see, our temperatures have come up. Remember, we were at 72, 73. Now look, we're hitting 77. So you can see we gained more than 150 points though by just going with uh, almost like 100, 160, almost 170 points by just raising the temp limit. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and max out the fan. So these are functioning heat sinks right here and right here, and those were getting pretty warm. I'm gonna get, put a fan right here and point it at the face of the card. So perfect representation of, although we're pulling more power, how keeping the temps down, keep the core clock up. Look at that, we're, we're scraping 2000 and sometimes hitting 2010 without even touching the core slider yet. So this right here should get us some pretty big improvement. And I honestly feel like pointing this fan at it helps because that heat sink is doing something. Yeah, and we made it into the top 100 now. And that's just by maxing out these sliders, allowing it to pull more power, maxing out the fan and pointing that fan right at, it, right at it. All right, let's go ahead and start moving the slider a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and start moving core clock first. I'm gonna do it in 25 megahertz increments. You might be wondering, Jay, why are you starting so low? We'll use, like we showed you, well, you maybe you didn't see it, but it did start the test at bumping up to 20 or 2010. 
And I already know from previous, previous experience, this card will not go very far above where GPU boost is already taking it. Remember, 1710 or 1740 or whatever that number is, is the actual boost clock, like the turbo clock that's ready to go with this. That, that's considered the overclock. But GPU boost pushes it farther. So we're, going, we're adding that to where GPU lands, which is now we're talking three to 400 megahertz faster than the actual boost clock that the card ships with. You gotta understand how GPU boost works. It is self overclocking and it, all of your cards do it. Even if you've touched none of these features, you plug it in a video graphics card that has GPU boost technology, it is self overclocking whether you realize it or not. It doesn't void its warranty or anything, it's just the way it's meant to work. Now let's see if we can get higher than that 11840. But first I'm gonna go ahead and see where that lands us on the leaderboard. All right, so number 64. So what I wanna do is I wanna find where the core is max stable, and then I then wanna play with memory. You don't wanna move the sliders together because then you don't know exactly which one caused the crash. Oh, 11,831. So the plus 25 didn't do anything. <laughs> Actually, we lost nine points. And this is where you have to just start sort of playing around. You might be able to go, check it out, I did plus 100. And it might work in that test. The problem is you go to a different test that allows it to actually clock up higher because I, we're not gonna, I don't believe we're gonna truly get plus 50 out of this. I think what's gonna happen is it might hit that for a second and then we're gonna hit power limit or voltage limit and then it's gonna drop down. But if the test suddenly becomes less demanding and then it spikes up real high on that core clock, that's where you're gonna get your crashes and stuff. It's like if you're in a tug of war and then you're pulling really hard and then they let go of the rope. Yeah. And then you go flying, that's, it, that's yeah. what the and, does. And Power limit is holding onto the rope, yeah. and then suddenly, or voltage limit, and suddenly it's like, hey. And then the <laughs> core is like, ah. Hey, 11,933. Whoa. Okay. Moving on up. So we are now at 45. So I'm thinking plus 75 might actually make it. All right, so we made it over 12,000. So clearly we're scaling nicely with this core, with this cooling, with, I think the, I honestly feel like the fan on the front helped a lot. These front heat sinks on here get really warm and this is just aiding and keeping things like the memory, which is known to get hot on this generation, as well as the power delivery um, as cool as possible. Although the power delivery is kind of all over the card, so it's clearly getting good cooling. Let's go ahead and see if we can do plus 100. We'll just come back with where we max out on the core. So this is where a lot of the frustration comes in, where you, you get up to a certain clock, you get it to pass, you get your score, and then you can't get it to repeat. For instance, we're at plus 100 on the core, but it's now crashing at plus 100. However, we already had it running uh, just fine at plus 100, which actually got us our score that got us on the leaderboard. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Hall of Fame again. We moved all the way up to rank 27, and our score was 12,078. Now that was plus 100. Then I was like, okay, let's try plus 125, and then we got a crash. I'm like, let's try plus 110, and we got a crash. Let's try plus 100, and we got a crash. Okay, let's restart the system, clear any sort of maybe memory faults or something that's in there. And then we get through plus 75, no problem. Plus 100 continues to crash. So the thing you have to keep in mind too is that you're not getting that actual number as an offset. That's the target, but it, happens, it has to happen in 15 megahertz increments. So what I'll do now is I'll kind of fine tune this and go, okay, maybe plus 100 is actually applying 15 megahertz extra versus 95 maybe giving us just staying at that next bin instead of jumping two bins, if that makes sense. So now I'm gonna see if I can't get this to pass with maybe 95 or so, because before I start playing with memory, I've gotta get it at a stable core clock. If it continues to crash with, with core, then I'm not gonna know if I'm having any problems with memory. So I've gotta get that stable before we start playing with memory. So now they're at, at plus 95, I'm gonna try running this one more time and seeing if it will pass. If not, I was able to get plus 75 to continue running just fine, but it's about 30 points lower on the score. And that's not gonna get us into the plus 25 because I don't think memory this time around is gonna get us as much of a result as we're expecting. All right, as you can see, 12,079. That's one point higher than we got before, but we're back. And the way I actually ended up getting our plus 100 to work again, because like I said, we kept crashing, was I pulled down the core voltage percent down to 75. Actually, I pulled it down to 50%, and then we saw it work a few times and we had one crash. 75% now is getting us, or plus 75, I mean, I still don't know exactly what that is, but it's back and it's working. So now we're gonna go and play with memory. But before I do that, I'm gonna save this profile right there. And I wanna show you something with Heaven. And like I've said multiple times already, it's important to remember this is error correcting memory. So the, the way that 
you would know your memory was acting weird in the past is that you'd start getting the crazy artifacts, the, the triangle shapes, the pinks, the blues, the crazy lines and flickering. That's usually indicative of memory. If you ever see like, Jay, I'm getting these weird shapes and stuff showing up on my screen and I'm not overclocking or anything, it often can mean that either your memory's overheating or it's just straight up going bad or at least one module or something is. We're gonna talk about memory here now. So if I go plus 100 on the memory watch, it'll dip when I apply it, but then it comes back. And you can see so far there's really no effect. Let's go 500 on the memory. As you can see, once again, nothing's really happening. But that's a 500 megahertz increase. What about 750? Look at that, look at that dip. It dipped all the way down to 132. But look, it only came back up to 140. So you can see now we've actually got about a five FPS loss because Although the memory is running fast, it's making errors along the way. This is typically with a card where you'd start seeing the weird flickering, the shapes, and maybe even a frozen image. Can we go plus 800? Yeah, see, look at that initial hit. But now look at where the FPS is settling. See, the higher we go with the memory, the more impact we're taking, look at that. Now this is when normally if you weren't measuring FPS, you'd be like, wow, look, I'm running so much speed on the memory but then you realize you're actually really hurting yourself. So I'm really curious as to what Port Royal is gonna do with memory speed and how it might do well though, because remember, it is, it is, synth it is a synthetic benchmark that's designed to leverage that type of, uh, of performance. All right, so we're just, this is chicken and mouse now. Chicken and mouse? Cat and mouse, wow. <laughs> We're having chicken for, for lunch, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> you see 12,005, that's, that's way lower than our score was without memory. And I had to drop the core clock again because it started crashing when we upped the memory. So I figured, I know for a fact now what we're chasing is core clock boost bin like duration at which how long we stay at that clock. So you know what that means? We gotta build a thing. Now I understand that there are probably a few of you out there right now that are going, what the hell? And that's what happens when you have new subscribers to an old stupid channel like mine. This is my Blowy Matron 5000. And this is just an air conditioned computer now. And we always start this all, this, this RIP GN type series off with air conditioning. And as I've said, we are not going to reach his scores with this setup because he went right to LN2 with Joe. But remember, that's Joe's score that's up there. So Steve gets to still do his own. <clears throat> so what we've got right here is obviously my, is it 12,000 BTU AC? I think it's 12,000. That's going to a box. We've, believe it or not, gotten a lot more efficient at this. Some of our previous revisions were a little sketchy. So you see we've got our cable pass through here. We've got some there. We're taped around the bottom so we can control the air loss. I want to control where the air goes. In fact, if Phil goes around the backside, there's a slit that I cut into the bottom and that's because we're forcing the air to go across all the components and then it will kind of come out the backside. We don't want it to be sealed. We want air in, air out. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna kick on the AC, give it time to pull the temp down in there, see how low it will go. Now I know a lot of you might be looking at this going, what the heck Jay, you're taking that heat exchanger air and you're just pulling the hot air back into your studio. Well, that's fine. That's why we've got a 10 ton unit that cools off this warehouse, keeping us all nice and cool. So trust me, the warmth that comes out of here, not a problem. <laughs> no, it's not all bad. So. Obviously we were able to keep the thing nice and cool, sitting at about 37 to 42 degrees under load, depending on the part of the test. If we go to the Hall of Fame, check this out. We did get a really good run here. In fact, we are in the top 10 now, and we beat Kingpin's LN2 cooled 2080 Ti at 2610 megahertz. I was thinking making it in the top 10 would be great, or the top 100 would be great, and we did, and I was like, maybe top 50, and I was like, hey, we made top 20, could make top 25. And then we made it to 15, and now we made it to nine. That probably isn't gonna hold for very long, but I'm not, too, uh, I'm not too upset with this. There's a couple of one, two, three 2080 Ti's that are still beating us on LN2, obviously. So yeah, not bad considering the fact that it's an FE card with a stock BIOS, with a fan pushing on it, and then an AC blowing at it. There's nothing custom about it. Literally, it's out of the box FE stuck on there. And it's competing with cards on here that are all running custom power delivery systems, hard mod, LN2. 
almost, I think pretty much every single one of these other cards up here, except for maybe Lucky Noob, he's at 2100. This is all new territory for me and uh, Rip GN's kicked off only in the sense that I'm currently on the leaderboard and Steve's personally not, but he does have an LN2 ready card, so I assume he's gonna come up here and knock me out of the top 10 pretty quickly. Ball's in your court, Steve. Hey, Phil. Hey, look at, Phil. what? This just got real all of a sudden. Oh. <laughs> oh my God. Big Chungus, Founders Edition.